Hi everyone, so tonight we're going to talk a little bit about how scientists use living cells to produce uh, modern day drugs. And in particular I'm going to focus on the story behind a single hamster which has completely revolutionised the manufacturing processes used by drug companies all around the world today. And it will be interesting to talk about it because drugs are becoming very, very expensive. It's a real problem for society and it often makes headline news such as this one here from my favourite newspaper, The Daily Paper Mail. <laughs> Um, and there are many reasons why drugs are becoming more expensive, but one of them is because the manufacturing processes themselves are very expensive. <laughs> they also means that we share some really cute guys of hamsters, and I'm sorry Chris, but hamsters are cute and spiders. <laughs> um, but what drugs am I talking about exactly? Well, the ones that most are familiar with, the ones you buy in a chemist or a supermarket, something like aspirin. And these drugs are very small, and we can make them very easily in the lab with a series of chemical reactions. A bit like how Walter and Jesse make um, crystal meth and break it bad, and everyone's actually watched that TV show. But the drugs that I'm talking about are proteins, and these drugs are much, much more complex. So on the picture on the right just shows a typical protein molecule. It's very large, and zoomed in on the left here is an aspirin molecule. So aspirin we can make in the lab, but proteins we can't easily make. They're just too big and they're way, way too complex. <coughs> and this is a real problem um, for scientists. So that's how I feel most days in my PhD. Um, but as we understand more and more about complex diseases such as cancer, we become more and more reliant on these protein drugs to help treat these diseases. But luckily for us, nature is actually very, very good at making proteins. All life on this planet, from single cells to complex organisms such as ourselves, make proteins on a daily basis to survive. And central to all life is DNA. And DNA is just simply the genetic code that tells the cell exactly how to make a protein. And we can make DNA in the lab. It's very cheap to do and it's very, very easy. And this sequence here actually encodes for a protein that's made in labs around the world to treat a certain type of blood cancer in humans. So what we do as scientists is we make the DNA with all the instructions to make the protein, we insert it into a living cell, and the living cell reads those DNA instructions and it makes the protein for us. And that's actually the foundation of the entire biotech industry, but unfortunately it's a very expensive process, but it's the best process that we actually have to make these drugs. So what living cells do we use? And the thing is, there's actually a range of living cells out there that we can use, but arguably the most popularly used ones and most widely used ones are ones derived from a single female Chinese hamster. And it has a very interesting story actually, so I'm going to talk about that for a little bit. So it starts off in the late 1940s, and in China, um, scientists were using Chinese hamsters in the lab to study the sort of how diseases spread. And there's a guy in America, and he was really keen to get his hands from his hamsters for his own research. But it was the end of World War II, and the tensions between the two companies were quite, um, between the two countries were quite um, poor. But anyway, these, these hamsters were smuggled out, and it caused a real problem because the Chinese government was convinced that the Americans were going to use them as a biological weapon. They really thought they were going to infect them with diseases, attach parachutes to them, and fly them over mainland China. Um, obviously, this never happened, it's completely ridiculous. But what did happen was that no more hamsters got sent from China to America. So these hamsters quickly got inbred. But this actually helped a lot of research because within breeding comes a lot of genetic problems, and it helped advance our genetic research quite a lot. And in 1957, this guy came along, Theodore Park, and he had a bit of an unhealthy obsession with ovaries, for whatever reason, but he seemed to isolate some cells from the ovary of a one single female Chinese hamster. So it's quite important, that just one hamster. And he grew them in the lab, and what he found was something quite interesting, because when we grow cells in the lab, eventually they die after a few um, generations, but these cells, they just kept growing and growing and growing. And it does happen sometimes in nature, it's very rare. And as scientists, we call them immortal cell lines. And it's a bit like cancer, really, it's keep growing. And these cells are still with us today. But why are they really important? Well, firstly, they're not human. They're actually from a hamster. So if they got contaminated with a virus in the manufacturing process, it's very unlikely that that virus would get passed on to us. They're very easy to genetically manipulate, they grow fast, and they're very easy to grow at commercial scales. So a typical manufacturing process will be to get the DNA, they post the protein that we want, and we'll insert that to thousands of different cherry cells, or so hamster cells, and we'll screen those cells and find which of those ones are very good at producing the drug, which of those are the high producers. And then we put them in a big tank, and these big tanks are, I mean, they're great for these cells, they love it. Um, we keep them warm, we give them oxygen, we feed them, and they have a really good time basically. And in return, they make the drug for us, they produce loads and loads of this protein. And then after a period of time, we empty this tank and we separate out the protein drug from the cells and then purify it ready for human use. And essentially in a nutshell, that's exactly how all modern day drugs are produced these days. And it's very expensive and very time consuming. And that's a lot of what my research is trying to address and make it cheaper. But I still find it fascinating that a single hamster, just one hamster that died 60 years ago, we still have cells um, with us in the labs today using to save 
thousands of thousands of lives every year by making these drugs. And I thought it was an idea worth sharing with you all tonight, and thank you for listening.